He had some heart conditions, which made us worry about the risk of him suddenly dying. It's mind-boggling, really, that somebody's willing to place their life in your hands. These poor patients are waiting and waiting, and you keep thinking, if that was me, that was my mum, that's not fair. I've had a scan. They find, like, a brain tumour. There's a chance that I can make things a lot worse if I'm not choosing the right patient at the right time. We've got a finite amount of resource and a growing backlog of patients, and that's difficult. My first patient is losing vision, so she's going to be the priority patient. When we're trying to pull out all the stops so that we don't have to cancel a patient on the day. When you finish surgery and it's gone well, it's great. I love that feeling. What are you doing? I'm alive. I'm <laughs> OK. Yeah, it's all gone fine. But we're happy, aren't we? Yeah. Look, my darling. See you soon. Yeah. Champion. It's calm before the storm. She's an impatient as well. It's a little bit of grit and determination. We are good to go. Despite the issues we have with our resources and the frustrations we have, we're able to do amazing things for our patients. And it makes you feel really good when your patients do well. Ken and Dennis is one of 13 neurosurgeons at Leeds General Infirmary. These are the patients yeah. which tend to take lower priority anyway. We've listed her, we've yeah. listed him, he's not urgent. If you've got a growth inside your head that's pressing on your brain, then you would want to have that surgery straight away. If your waiting list is so long, you've got 10 or 12 patients, all of whom need their surgery as soon as possible. It's a case of making sure that those patients are at the front of the queue. One patient who may need to be added to the surgery list is Karen. Three months ago, a growth was discovered on her brain. Today, she will find out if she needs surgery to remove it. I've come today because I've had a scan and they find like a brain tumor on the left-hand side. Karen had a brain scan after she had a blackout whilst driving her car. Quite near home, actually. Just went off a long road and I just veered off and there was a gentleman behind me with a dash cam. Luckily, there were no cars um, coming the other way at the point of I went off the road, but I went into a field. I can't remember any of it. I keep losing what to say and what I'm wanting to say and stumbling on my words a lot. I have brought my husband, so hopefully we'll get some answers today. Take a seat. Thank you. I've got some scans for you here. All this grey structure is your brain. This is the abnormality oh, wow. here. Can you see that? Yeah. Really bright. Wow. It is bigger than I thought. Yeah. It's nearly as big as her eyeball. And has your speech been affected by this at all? Just word finding or slurring? Yeah, word or... finding, yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. She, sometimes she'll, she can speak to you and it's, it's just made up words, I might, basically. I might not know the last word. In terms of what we do about it, I think that there's enough diagnostic uncertainty. I would probably have it removed. Yeah. I'm sorry to have upset you. So obviously a lot of information for you to take on. If you think someone's got the possibility that they have got a cancerous tumour, then ideally you would operate as soon as possible. Thanks a lot. You're very welcome. Take care now. Tumours can progress pretty fast over a matter of weeks. The deterioration can be rapid. Due to the potential risks with Karen's tumour, she will now be prioritised for surgery. I'm smacked, to be honest. I didn't want surgery at all. I don't like having a needle, I don't like having COVID jab, so... There's too much at home to lose, to not go down the avenue and get it done now. Well, I've got a 22-year-old, but I've got a 12-year-old, and I've got a three-year-old granddaughter. It happens to us all eventually, and we've all got to... But not yet, so...
I think for a lot of people, having brain surgery is probably one of your worst nightmares, to be honest. They've built themselves up to this moment. People are very anxious. Morning. Morning. Can we have Karen? Morning, Karen. Morning. Keep going, my love. Right to the end. Into the first pair. Karen is one of 18 patients who have arrived at the surgical admissions ward, hoping to have an operation later today. Jane is going to bed number four. Okay. Come on. Well done. Another patient on Kennan's surgery list is Jean. A bit more comfortable for you, isn't it? A swelling inside a weakened blood vessel, known as an aneurysm, was found in her brain a year ago. A recent scan has revealed it is at risk of bursting. I had double vision. I went to the optician and they couldn't find any reason for it. I went to the GP and she organised a, a brain scan, found this aneurysm. They said they thought it should be operated on. Not They sorted the double vision out with um, just prisms on my glasses. So. <laughs> it looks Thank you very much. An aneurysm is like a blowout on a tyre. It's a bubble on the side of the blood vessel. The concern with aneurysms is that they can rupture, they can bleed. Have you been abroad in the last 10 days? No. no. The worst case scenario of an aneurysm rupture is that, is that you die from it. Before Kennan can operate on Karen and Jean, they both need to be allocated a ward bed for after surgery. Without one, their operations can't go ahead. It'll be quick. I think it's just it's just here. It'll be a quickish procedure. Well, fingers crossed we get something. Yeah. I did say to the manager, I said, well, actually, Karen needs a ward bed. Usually ward beds are easier to come by. And he said, and he said well, actually, it's the ward beds that are the problem. But overnight, a number of patients have arrived in A&E who need to be admitted. This will impact on the beds available to Kennan. So we're in 14. Yeah, this is cheap. And then, wonderful. Thank you very much. I need to talk to you about beds today. We have a number of patients that have come in to the emergency department and are currently on trolleys downstairs. And until we know where they're going, yeah. we can't commit any beds to, to you and to the other patient. No. Um, so that does mean there's a chance we may not get you done today. Right. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest. Okay. It's frustrating for me, and it must be ten times more frustrating for you. And I'm sorry about that. Okay. If there's a chance that I'm not going to be able to operate on my patient, then I feel like I've let them down. I should come back to you when I know a bit more. If you see me coming, it probably won't be good news. But if we get the green light and, we're, and we've got a bed for you, then we'll probably just send for you and we'll, um, and we'll get going. In the majority of cases, they're very understanding and, and it's, but I still dread doing it because I, because I hate it. I, 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 feel, I feel like we're, we're not providing the service that we should be able to provide. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. <clears throat> so the list has been put on hold. Completely? Yes. Okay. Um, Do we have a priority? Well, um, that's a tricky one. If we have to choose between the two, it's going to be a difficult decision. I'll have to have a think about that, to be honest. OK. It's not an uncommon situation. You have two patients with two very different pathologies, both of which pose a significant risk to them. You have to make a difficult decision as to which one is your priority, particularly if it's looking like you're only going to have a bed for one of them. The concern is the patient that you haven't prioritised um, will have an event of some sort or be a risk to their life. You just don't know that. It's very, very difficult and it, it weighs heavily on you. Because whilst you, you make a decision, you're never entirely sure whether you've made the right decision. Plastic surgery is about reconstruction. The human body and its anatomy is wonderful. Being able to do something physical and manual that improves the well-being of your patients is a joy. Professor Simon Kay is a world leader in hand transplants. 
and part of a team of 17 specialist plastic surgeons. We're the busiest unit in the world for hand transplantation. We did our first transplant in 2012. Since then, we've done 14 transplants in eight patients. Leeds is the only hospital in the UK to specialise in this surgery. For every patient who's listed for transplant, it comes down to the likelihood of them getting an immunological match. I'm going to go up to the ward now. Everybody's equal on the waiting list and the transplant goes to the most suitable. A possible match has been identified for Jamie, who has been waiting for a double hand and forearm transplant for more than two years. On the 9th of December 2016, I had a near-fatal work accident getting electrocuted on overhead power lines when I was building a scaffold. Morning. Are you all right? 33,000 volt electricity shock. It did feel like it liquefied my insides at the time. I'm surprised it didn't kill me, to be honest, but here I am. <laughs> All I want you to try and do is try and relax as much as you can. Just Sorry imagine you're that. somewhere else. Somewhere you'd rather so I've always been a fighter. Maybe if I didn't have my kids, maybe I wouldn't be so willing, but, <laughs> but I certainly am for their futures. Morning, Jamie. Morning. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Waking you up? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right now, no problem. Good to see you. Oh. Can I move your legs? Yeah, of course. <laughs> OK. Cardiac is still on hold. Theatre 4 can start. Yeah, one's list. OK, excuse me. For the transplant to go ahead, the team will need not one, but two theatres so both Jamie and the donor limbs can be prepared simultaneously. Theatre three? No, the patient's still on hold in theatre three. Eight patients' operations will now need to be cancelled. Four of them are children. They, they can go ahead in theatre four, and we gave them the early go-ahead at quarter to eight. The gift of getting a, a patient who's donating some organs and then a patient receiving them, we cannot stop that uh, type of procedure going ahead. Thanks, Alice. Thank you, bye. So the cut off for theatre three, Vicky, is 10 o'clock. If we don't have a crit care bed by then, we won't have enough time. I feel for the patients who are postponed, but would it be justifiable to say, Jamie, I can't do your surgery because I can't cancel patients? But I think if they met Jamie and saw what a life-changing event this was, they'd understand how difficult it is to say to a donor family, no, your gift's really generous, but we don't want it. So I'm probably going to shorten the bone to about that level. Um, that's because the, the more of the donor bone you have, the better the function of the donor muscles. Although a donor has been found for Jamie, the procedure is very rare and extremely high risk. In hand transplantation, the risk of suppressing your immune system and that immune system fights infection, cancers and tumours. A patient has to be able to balance the risks and benefits of a hand transplant, and they have to have the right stability and understanding. And this will be replaced with a, with a patch of donor skin, so we'll kind of zigzag it in for you. Okay. The donor skin contrasts with yours, Jamie, because mm. um, you're very dark-skinned. Mm. Well, the donor's very pale. Yeah. If we wait a long time, a person with exactly your skin tone, we could be waiting another 10 yeah, years. Yeah, exactly right. From a physical point of view, Jamie has a real need, and he's a coper. He gets on with it, and that's a really positive attitude. They've got no tattoos, right. but you can soon change that. <laughs> <laughs> we need to leave you enough length that if yeah, it fails, it's you quite, can yeah. still use your, yeah. your split hook. Nothing you want to ask? No, nothing. Thank you so much. See yeah. you later. Okay, all go. I'm quite excited actually. I've been waiting for years for a hand transplant. Make my life so much easier as I'm a single parent with twin girls. They are five months old when I lost all my limbs. They don't know any different, but yeah, I've always explained to them that I've been on a waiting list, so yeah, they see me as normal like this, but hopefully one day life will be a lot easier for daddy with his hands. <laughs> <laughs> 
While Jamie has surgery, his mum, Carla, is looking after his twin daughters, Savannah and Isabella. <laughs> well, I got a call, and I think a lot of it went over my head because it was such a shock. Oh, please be careful. <laughs> they were putting, like, large, you know, those Wrigley tin sheets on a roof, and he went like that. And the tin didn't actually touch the cables, but, of course, electricity can jump. <laughs> he managed to get off the roof and get down. But he said to the lad, you better call an ambulance. I am going to die. You know. Oh, they're lovely. Thank you. Aren't they beautiful? They smell like lavender. Mm. This is a nice smell. The surgeons thought that he might last a week if he was lucky. But of course, they didn't know my Jamie. <laughs> he was determined. He had those little girls at home. And he loved those little girls so much. <laughs> it's so important for Jamie to have hands. He'll be able to hold his daughter's hands again. It's a really physical job being in orthopaedics. It's physical because we're dealing with the strongest structure in the body <laughs> and we're effectively breaking them and reorientating them, moving them around. Adele Fishlock is one of eight paediatric orthopaedic surgeons at Leeds Children's Hospital. We are definitely adding patients a lot quicker than we're crossing off. At the minute, I feel like it's very much we're firefighting. The patients that I mainly see are children with neuromuscular problems, neuro disabilities, mainly children with cerebral palsy. On it. So we're doing a joint list today. Declan, you can see that the right hip is reduced in the sockets. Where on the left side is left hip is dislocated. What we're seeing post-COVID is children that potentially could have had smaller operations have now deteriorated. We think we're possibly going to have to open this to get it back in. We're now needing to do much bigger surgery, which means longer time in theatre, longer time to recover, bigger blood losses. So it all has this big knock-on effect. So the plan today is to hopefully get this hip back in. His hip's been out for quite a while. Declan has cerebral palsy, a neurological condition which impacts his mobility. He's been waiting 12 months for an operation on his hip. You've got to be careful when you're hoisting him. You're not knocking that hip. He doesn't like, obviously, being sat in his chair, so he gets a little bit tetchy. It'll make such a big difference for him. His brother plays rugby on a Sunday, and I haven't been able to put him in the, in the wheelchair to go watch his brother because of how much it hurts. Like, he loves being moving, and he loves being in a crowd, and he loves the noise. It's not, it's not fair for him, it's not. Cerebral palsy in itself can affect children in multiple ways. Problems with their arms, problems with their hips, knees, feet. Uh, so it's about being very specific on the surgery that you are doing for that patient. That was a beautiful smile, young man. I'm always smiling. Yeah. You're always smiling. Another child on Adele's surgery list for today is Hamza. Hamza's cerebral palsy has caused a problem with his hip, and over the last year, his condition has deteriorated. So this is Hamza. So you can see he's got really vulgar femoral necks. Uh, so he had an uh, X-ray back in August of last year, and you can see that hip didn't look too bad. Yeah. Certainly, if you look between the two of them, it's changed quite considerably. So that's the plan for today. Busy day. Definitely have some breakfast and some coffee. Morning. All good. Yes, yeah, smile, that's good. Um, obviously, we're pretty Morning, Declan. Yeah. How are you? Due to the complexity of the operations, Adele will work with fellow surgeon John Davis. All set. Uh, is, is there any questions that you've got for us? Right, see you next. No. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Third time lucky and I have this one. Well, I'm so sorry that, you know, we couldn't do it before. We didn't have the just... tasty bed and we're keeping everything crossed, yeah. absolutely. So our next part of call to go, they just need to do a wall drown and have a bed mate and then we're going straight there. Yeah. Declan's cerebral palsy has impacted his lungs. So after surgery, he will need a bed in the high dependency unit. As Hamza doesn't yeah. require specialist care, he needs a standard ward bed. We'll see you soon. We'll let you know as soon as we know anything. OK, thank All you. All right. Speak to you soon. Take care. The type of bed that becomes available first will determine which child goes into theatre next. The team involved in hand transplant surgery is huge. Morning. Morning. You got it? Yeah, thank you. Beautifully done. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. Do you know what we're going to do for you? Bilateral hand transplant and forearm. A team of around 40 theatre staff are preparing for Jamie's hand and forearm transplant. For a double hand transplant, you need four operating teams, one for each limb. And then as the limbs come together, they become two teams. Do you have any more questions before we put you to sleep? No, I'd like to see the uh, hand, but I can't come. No, you can't. <laughs> You'll see them shortly. I will. Surgeons, trainees, nurses, anaesthetists, theatre staff, theatre technicians. It's huge. When Gronya and Wise get back with donor one, donor two, hopefully Rob or I will be relatively free by then. The whole transplant could take around 14 hours. Let's get you down. Oh, lovely. Feeling nervous? No. Yeah. <laughs> Excited? Yeah. Yeah. Excited sounds good. <laughs> Brilliant. The really critical thing is for the donor limb, we like to reduce the time it has no blood supply, that the longer it's lacking oxygen, the more likely it is to suffer episodes of rejection and the poorer the function and the less long-lasting it will be. So we try and keep that to an absolute minimum. OK, go to it. Let's make it work. Okay. I Thank promise we're all waiting for you. Hi there, how are you doing? Hi there. OK, mate. Thank you so much. OK. Good man, thank you so much. Cheers. <laughs> Sleep well. Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> I'll see you again in the morning. Thank <laughs> you. Right, you can't feel like that. Yeah, cool. Brilliant. Thanks, Bill. Right, you're welcome. Right. I kind of feel if you put one of those lie detector stress testers on me, it can go off all the way through. Have we got transport? Have we got enough team? Are the drugs ready? Is the anaesthetist happy? You know, everything can go wrong. And that's a big responsibility to shoulder. Prof, you just want to know when they're on the way back? I want to know when limbs are off and when they're on the way back. Too. Yeah, OK. Simon needs to closely coordinate with his team in a hospital almost two hours away, who are operating on the donor limbs. Um, well, the first part of the process is to identify the key structures in the arm. Julie, who's one of the abdo team, they're all scrubs. Julie is going to text me as soon as there's an to the skin. I don't want to go beyond the point of no return until we know we're getting some limbs. Once you're committed to the transplant, you've removed his own muscles, you've shortened his own skeleton, you've now done him damage if you don't restitute by the, completing the transplant. And then that's a point we don't want to abandon him at. Can I have a sling, please? As soon as they get confirmation that the donor limbs are en route, the team must work quickly to finish preparing Jamie's limbs. In neurosurgery, Kennan and his team have been waiting to start operating for more than an hour. But he still needs confirmation on whether his patients, Karen and Jean, have ward beds for after surgery. There's time pressure to get an answer about a bed early. And so we, we have to set a, a cut off. I need to know by nine o'clock. Because even then, by the time the patient's down, they're in the anaesthetic room, they're put to sleep, or well, it's going to be 11 o'clock before we start. 
<sighs> the ups and downs, the emotional ups and downs. It's a very, very frustrating situation where you, you have all the resources that you need in order to perform the surgery apart from the bed. Hello? It's Mr. Dennis. Yeah. Thanks for letting us know. Cheers, Vicky. Bye. Bye. After some moving of patients, we've got a bed. But Kennan only has one bed confirmed. He needs to decide which of his two patients in the admissions ward will go first. It's an uncomfortable decision to have to make. Um, and Karen clinically is the higher priority. The reason why we've prioritised the tumour today is because it has some unusual features. Um, and I'm just anxious to know that we're not dealing with something more aggressive. It remains to be seen whether we're going to have a bed for Jean. I'm not hugely confident at the moment. And her aneurysm is of a size where the risk of hemorrhage is by no means insignificant. This is one of the most difficult situations to have to deal with. And you question yourself afterwards by deciding on Karen. There was anxiety that I'm going to make somebody with quite a big aneurysm the ticking time bomb and wait longer than I would have wanted. And knowing that if she bleeds from her aneurysm, that would potentially be a threat to her life. Jean will only get her operation today if she's allocated a ward bed and if there are no complications with Karen's surgery. We're going to need the staples, I think, for this one, aren't yeah, we? We just need yeah, to exclude yeah. all that away, yeah. don't we? The most important trait to have as a neurosurgeon is to not allow yourself to get flustered in the face of adversity, because when you lose your focus, that's when things go very badly wrong. We will access the tumour just in front of her ear. We should, hopefully, be able to separate the tumour from the brain and remove it in its entirety, I hope. OK, uh, forceps, please. The team remove a few small sections of the tumour, which are sent to the lab for a biopsy. I need a patty handy. Removing the rest of the tumour will be a challenge, as it's full of tiny veins and there's a risk of heavy bleeding. Can I have another patty, please? Oh. There's an area that I'm skirting around which is the base of the tumour, where the blood supply is coming in. It really does growl at me. In neurosurgery, if you encounter a tumour with a very rich blood supply, then you run the risk of quite significant hemorrhage. You worry about the volume of blood that you're losing. Suction's a little bit high, I think. Never a good thing when it bleeds a lot, when you're trying to remove it. It just makes life more difficult. Anticipating we may have some more turbulence. See this, please? Thanks, Sam. See this, please? Funny, when the thing's out, the bleeding stops. It's good. All right, we'll have the top lights in, please. Uh, it's a feeling of relief when you've removed the tumour. You can tell the patient that that's what's happened, which is great. But you never know for sure until you've got the results back. Steady slide. <laughs> so that does make for an anxious wait. Kennan calls Karen's husband to give him an update. Hi, is that Michael? It is. Hi, it's Kennan Dennis here, neurosurgeon at the LGI. 
Hi, you all right? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I'm just phoning. Good. I'm just phoning to let you know that Karen's operation is all done. Right. The surgery went as well as could be expected. But at the end, I was happy that, that the tumour was all out. So, yeah. um, so far, so good. Right, brilliant. Can I just say thank you very much? You're more than welcome. It's my pleasure. Right, thank okay. you very much. Take care yeah. now. OK, cheers, bye. Bye. Good. Excellent. While Karen recovers, Kennan's next priority is Jean and seeing if a ward bed has become available so he can operate. Three hours into Jamie's hand transplant surgery, the donor limbs have arrived. It's a long-awaited day for Jamie and his family. I can remember him ringing me up and saying, Mum, I found this professor and he's doing hand transplants. He got a lovely reply back from Simon. And Simon said, yes, OK, we'll take you on, Jamie. As a mother, you have a child. And you can imagine donating a heart or a liver or something like that. But to actually let somebody cut the limbs off your child, I think that's a gift so Sorry, it's just so remarkable that they would give that gift of hands. With the donor limbs now in theatre, Simon and his team need to work against the clock to prepare them so they can be joined to Jamie's. Now we turn our attention to the donor limbs, where we'll do the mirror image of what we've done with his limbs. And luckily, of course, in the donor limbs, the anatomy is normal. So they haven't been subject to trauma, scarring, healing, distortion. So that's radial. This is brachialis. That, I think, is biceps. There's no blood supply, so the tissues all look pale and hard to differentiate one from the other. This is the most stressful part of the whole procedure. There's a vein and a an artery. Every minute the limbs are without oxygen, the tissues will deteriorate, increasing the risk of rejection. In Theatre One, the orthopaedic team work quickly to fix metal plates into Jamie's bones so the new arms can be attached. The idea is to keep the plates quite flexible so when we put the donor limb on, we can really compress the bones hard because what we want is really good bone healing. Because the last thing that uh, Prof K and his team want is us, us to have to go back in when he's done all the, the nerves and the vessels and the, and the tendons. We have to be quick because the bit that's going to keep the limbs aligned is the plastic bit. The donor arms are now ready to be attached. They're going to fix it now. Okay. Does it look like it's going to fit? Yeah, it looks good now. The limbs will now be screwed into the metal plates anchored in Jamie's bones. 22. How long have we been ischemic now? Just around 12, 25, so four hours, 20 minutes. And a lot of that was cold. The donor limbs have now been without oxygen for more than four hours. To prevent further deterioration of tissue, they urgently need to connect the new arms to Jamie's blood vessels. Once the skeleton is stable, then we go in and start repairing first the muscles and then the blood vessels, and then the nerves. There's a vein there, and there's a big vein there. That'd be a good start, wouldn't it? As the veins are connected, they need to test to see if blood is flowing through the donor arms. That's it done. I don't think that is twisted, is it? No. OK. There's that really heart-in-mouth moment when you've got the bone fixation done the skeleton is joined. 
And then at that point, I like the blood supply to be restored. That's the left arm on. Can I have a pack for here to clean the hand? And that's the moment you hope it goes pink. Everybody's quiet. We all watch. Go pink. Come on. Just give me a 15 blade. A bleeding finger shows the intricate network of blood vessels is working. Oh, I love surgery. I absolutely love surgery. <laughs> I think I've got the best job in the world. Being able to do something that improves the well-being of your patients is a joy. <laughs> Cheers, guys. This is a good one. After 10 hours of surgery, Jamie's arms are bandaged in casts. The next few days will be critical to see if his body rejects his new donor limbs. Uh, so the plan, hopefully, is Hamza first. Yeah, but... Uh... Unless there's a, definitely a HDU bed ready for Declan. On Adele's theatre list today are Declan, and Hamza, two children with cerebral palsy. Both need reconstructive surgery on their hips. She's just come back from the bed meeting. Tracy, Tracy sorry, sorry to, to accost you. Sorry to gang up on you. We're just wondering, have you been to the bed meeting? Yes. We're just wondering about the state of beds for the two we've got. One's for HDU. The HDU is okay. Amazing. I'm not too sure. On so if we start with Declan, who needs the HDU. Yeah. Brilliant, that's a great plan. Yeah. Oh, Tracy. Yeah. So kind of you, thank you. Thank you much so much. Thank you, okay, <laughs> thank you. Who goes first on the list? Often feel at the minute it's down to luck. It depends if your bed is there for you. So it is, it's a lottery. Another patient has left the high dependency unit. Freeing up a bed for Declan, who takes the first slot in theater, while Hamza must wait. Is he a pub patrol? Oh, he is. He is. Yeah. What's his favorite pub then? Who's his favorite pub? Chess. Chess. Oh, very good. <laughs> Mine is Marshall. <laughs> if we're operating on hips, biggest joint in your body, it is heavy work. Declan, ouch. Okay, ouch. Can I remove it? Sorry. When my son was 18 months, he had surgery to wash out an infected hip. And for me, I think that was a real turning point to realise what it's like to be on the other side of it. Yes. Mummy's going to lift you up and we're going to go on that bed and then guess what's going to happen? We're going to get fixed. We are. And I think it's something really important that I never forget what that felt like. Go to sleep, Ace. And when you wake up, it'll all be so over and it'll all be different. I've been there on the other side of the bed. I've stood in that anaesthetic room and laid my son on the table and walked out. And it's hard. It's really hard. <laughs> you did really well, Mum. Well good. done. Thank you. Thank you. Well, look after him. Thank you. Have you got some long forceps, uh, Don? Just a self retainer, please. Thank you. Board. Adele attempts to move Declan's hip back into its socket. It's Do you have a, a bigger uh, Langham bed, please? Bigger than, bigger than that, yeah. The delay in waiting for a date for his operation means Declan's surgery is now more of a challenge. At the minute, his femoral neck is sat like that, what we call valgus, and the hip is dislocated, so it's out of the socket. But at the minute, we still don't know whether the hit, it, it looks like it's not going to reduce closed at the minute. I just get a feeling it, everything looks really tight, attracted and shortened. So no matter how hard you try and pull that hip down, because their muscles are so tight, they're just trying to pull it back. So this is why, ideally, you want to do them before the, the hip's actually dislocated, because it's just dealing with a dislocated hip is so much more difficult. The complications mean that Declan's surgery is taking longer than expected. Although Hamza has now been allocated a bed, if the operation overruns, there is a risk he won't make it into theatre. 
2018 المه... العمليه مهمه جدا لحمزه هاي عالم كثيره يعني طبعا الاهل اني بس كل هذا الطفل هذا يصير احسن يعني بدرجه او بخطوه لقدام امورك 100 100 How are we doing? With Karen recovering after surgery, Kellen can now operate on Jean's aneurysm and seal off the swelling in the weakened blood vessel in her brain. We have had a patient in the past who was who had waited for some time and had been cancelled as well. Went home and then the following day um, suffered a bleed and unfortunately passed away. So they were cancelled because of prioritization of other patients on the day. Oh. Hello? Hello, who's that? Vicky, hi. Oh, go on, tell me. We've got a bed for the aneurysm. Excellent. That's really good news. So we just need to close A&E now for the next three hours, don't we? Somebody doesn't steal our bed. Despite the issues we have with, with our resources and the frustrations we have, well, once the bed's confirmed, it tends to then fade away into the background and you can just focus on, on what, what you're trying to achieve. So we've got a bed for the clipping. Better late than never, indeed. Yeah. So we'll come at it through this fold in the brain here. And then we know once we're at that branching point, we know that the aneurysm is right next to it. The aim of the surgery will be to seal off the bulge in the vein with a metal clip. We'll, we'll place it across the neck here. So the blood's coming in here and then passing out here. But at the moment, it's also going into the aneurysm. So we need to place the clip across there to exclude the aneurysm from the circulation. I feel that I age several years every time I operate on an aneurysm. There's the added stress of accessing something that could rupture, that could burst. If something was to go wrong, um, then it can be catastrophic. We're just starting to come it's the aneurysm, there it is. You're starting to see it now. So the neck of the aneurysm, the, the blood's coming in here. At the moment, it's filling the aneurysm here as well. With a risk of a bleed on the brain, a dye is fed into the vessels around the aneurysm to identify exactly where the clip should be placed. This should cut off the blood flow to the bulge in the weakened blood vessel. Branch one, branch two, big aneurysm there. So let's go with a seven straight, I would go. Pretty small, really. But that should be big enough to get all the way across the neck. So get right down each gutter. The mistake is to not go far enough. Nice control, that's good. Nice job. Nice job. Here it comes. So that lights up nicely. There's nothing in the aneurysm. It's dead. That's good. There you go. Job done. Yeah, well, you know. It's brain surgery, isn't it? Not rocket science. When you've got that number of people waiting for beds, it, it normally doesn't, doesn't happen like that. So yeah, personally surprised, but just goes to show that work was going on in the background to make things possible. It's been a good day. Relieved. Until next week. <laughs> With both patients now through surgery, next, Kenan must wait for the results of the biopsy on Karen's tumour. Yeah, X-ray there, please. Adele has been in theatre now for more than two hours. Declan's hip surgery has been more complex than expected. Been for a walk, and I had to walk round and been just walking round in a circle to myself. 
the way every minute is like an hour, it's, it's awful. And especially when you don't know how long. And it's like, how long's a piece of string? <laughs> Uh, can I have another swab, please? Oh, I think it's, oh, it's, it's that. that. Can I have a bit of bone wax, bone please? Wax. The team have cut out a section of bone from Declan's femur, which has caused heavy bleeding. So it's kind of bleeding from the bone surface. Sometimes it's actually really, really vascular. We keep having to sort of just slow down and make sure we get control of all the bleeding. So another swab going in. Thank you. How many's in at the minute? Three. Thank you. You're So we're getting there. We're getting yeah, there. we're definitely getting there. The hips looks like it's reducing. It's just that typical thing is we're just running out of time. We're just cutting the graft up to put inside the pelvis. The bone is placed into a cut made in the pelvis to anchor the hip into its new position. Just okay. Cock up, please. Oh, that looks oh, loads better. That's amazing. The bell is fantastic. Well done. That is really good, isn't it? Yeah, it's moved actually. Yeah. With the hip now in place, John gives the good news. Hey, how are you? All right. So it's all gone fine. It's all gone fine. Just thank yeah. Thank you. It's all right. It's okay. Thank you. So he's, he's, do, he's, he's, we're just finishing now, okay? And then you can see him then. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. I can't believe this. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're, okay. a, you're a diamond. Okay, no worries. Pleasure. Now the tears start. Yeah. We right. don't know how much we appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Well. It's been a year and a half, hasn't it, waiting for this? waiting for this day and now that waiting period is done and I know he's okay then I can breathe. It's a shame I'm in the hospital because it'd be a stiff drink. <laughs> Although Declan's surgery has been a success, the operation has overrun. John's going to go speak to the last family because we're just not going to have enough time. By the time we get him off the table, uh, with the brain stick cast on, it's going to be three o'clock, I think, realistically. He's older, it's dislocated, so it was always going to be a tough day at the office today. John needs to let Hamza's family know they've run out of time to do his surgery. I'm really, really sorry, but we're not going to be able to do the operation today. Still find it really difficult telling a patient that we've cancelled them. We've said we're going to do this operation. The emotional build-up to the surgery, it's that trust that they've built in me and I've broken that trust. The first case that we did, uh, a lot of blood loss, so we've, we've taken longer than, than we were expecting and we've run out of time. Uh, I'm, I'm so, so sorry. I'm really sorry. He says it's fine, it's out of our hands. Happy to go ahead. Just wants to know the next stage. Yeah. For, uh, for us, you're a priority, and you know, um, I'm really sorry that it's happened. Sell your wife. Show us your muscles next time. Yeah. Okay. You come back and see us later. Okay. So, by the camera, then? Yeah. I'm not sure. 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 I'm in four weeks' time. Are you so excited to get these off the hand? It's been five days since Jamie's hand and forearm transplant. I've come in today because I'm the only one here and I'm on leave, but um, I'm a bit clingy. <laughs> I, I really need to know that he's okay every day. Hey, I'm doing good, thanks. You? Yeah. Yeah. You're good at bum shuffling. Yeah. Today, Jamie's bandages will be removed so his new hands and forearms can be examined. 
After surgery, there are a number of challenges for his body. One is to heal, and then his regeneration starts. What's all this warring about? I'm sure. Heaviness. Try it on my <laughs> Just let me move you around. With Jamie, we joined up something like 10, 12 nerves aside, and we will see those start to regenerate in the first six to nine months. And they'll go on improving for at least three years. Just feels like today's. A little worse. Yeah. Well, we'll have a look at that. You know, I think it might just be me not having any sleep, feeling a bit. Uh, yeah, I didn't sleep that well last night. Uh, Partly worrying about you. We uh, stuck yeah. it on very carefully. The biggest thing to avoid in the early post operative period is injuring your hands before the sensation recovers. So burning them under hot water or so on. So, Jamie, you're all right. Yeah, do you want me to, you want me to do anything then? No, I want you just okay, to relax. Just relax. Okay. You can moan a bit if you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, anyway. What's that one say? Oh, that says um, actually Tiger. It's like a nickname we used to have for an ex girlfriend. <laughs> she she called you Tiger? Yeah. <laughs> Easy Tiger. Yeah, yeah. That's a good to get them off. Oh, a bit of a relief, mate, yeah. I can't wait to see it again, though. Just I don't feel much in my arm, so... Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. I've got you, Jamie. Simon needs to examine Jamie's new arms before they are rebandaged. The, the swelling's going down. Yeah. Looking good. Cool. <laughs> I would love to say I feel euphoric, but it's bloody hurt. Because <laughs> it's healing now, but I do. No, I feel blessed. I really do feel blessed and lucky to have it. Oh, sorry, Jamie. Let's take that out. It's going to be a hard first year, I think, with the nerves growing back for me to feel them. I've got to be super careful. They feel super heavy. And actually, if you lose your sun yeah. it's going yeah. to match more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's strange. It's just on you, and even though they might look different to what you had before, they're attached to you, so it's hard to not think that they're not yours. Oh. It's going to be tough, but I'm well up for it. I've always liked the challenge, and this is like... This, uh, just another one of those small challenges in my life. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend I know what that says across there. I know, but I thought you might be a man who speaks Latin. <laughs> well, my children I, yeah. uh, empower me. Lisqui in sepiterum. I don't know what sepiterum is. Yeah, forever in my heart. Yeah. Perfect. See you later. Right, we'll do. We're just Daddy, trying to call Daddy. Daddy, can you see us a because it's... Oh. I've had a bit of feedback from the team um, this morning, so we can go and have a quick look. Kenan has come to check in on his patients. Hi, Jean. Hi. How are you doing? You had such a late do yesterday. Well, my husband said it went quite late. No, not at all. I was just relieved uh, to get you done, to be honest. I was, I was pleasantly surprised. No, it was good. It was a good day yesterday and everything went really well. That was a great day. That was a really good day. That's the great thing about about my job, and that that's a real that's a real high. That's really good, and um, it makes up for all the lows, really. So yeah, I was really pleased with that. I'm very relieved. You know, I mean, it's it's funny you don't look forward to this surgery, but on the other hand, you don't look forward to it being cancelled. It's all good. Thank Got it done, much. and it all went very well. Thank you very much. You're and more thank than you welcome. You're more than welcome. With the aneurysm under control, Jean is now out of danger, and Kenan has the biopsy results of Karen's tumour. How are we doing? Not bad. Good. Nice to see you. We sent a, a specimen to the lab for what's called a frozen section, and the pathologist was very definite in saying that they thought it was a meningioma without any concerning features of cancer. And so, you know, I, that's really good news. Yeah. Um, you put up with the downsides, 
in order to have the positives and ultimately we're able to do amazing things for our patients. Do you think I could ever get another one? It's, it's unlikely, but right. not impossible, but hopefully not. Get to your main question. I've done it. No, your main oh, one. When can I go to hairdressers with my grey hairs? That's a really common question, I actually. <laughs> um, I would... Not with men, though. No, <laughs> no, no. no, not so much. <laughs> uh, despite the issues we have with, with our resources and the frustrations we have, ultimately our, our patients do well. And so I suppose you, you, you focus on that and you put up with the other side of it. Okay, right, thank brilliant. you Thank much. you very much. It's been nice to see you. Yeah, yeah it's been nice to see you. Take thank care. you. You're very welcome. Well done. Okay. <laughs> Taxi coming at 12, did you say? Yeah. There you go. Six weeks after arriving at hospital, Jamie can finally go home with his two new hands. The girls have missed him so much. Savannah said the other day she's never letting him go again. My goodness. <laughs> Bless you. Carefully, carefully. Oh, good to see you. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Oh, oh you're Thank home. Thank you so much for looking after the girl. Oh. Bless you. You all right? Yeah, you haven't had the bill yet. Oh, nice. They are amazing. They again, eh? They're heavy then, are they? Well, they were, yeah, when I first had them done. A bit cold or not, they were warm. No, right? they're warm. Yeah. They're warm. Yeah, Isn't that a wonderful like gift you've been given? Yeah. I I remember the time when I was holding a hand that wasn't going yeah. to make it, if yeah. you remember. It's funny to hold your hands I know, again. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Hands are are what make us human. We do many things with our hands that other animals don't do. We point and we indicate, we gesticulate, we caress, we care. I feel, I feel yeah. normal again now, instead of, like you say, where I didn't have really? a kid, when I look in the mirror, I've been, like you say, my arm's cut off. It's, like you say, they say about that big picture, mm. don't they? Like being whole yes. as a person when you always look to yourself. Mm. Yeah. And like you say, I feel whole yeah. again now, do you know what I mean? I can't wait for all the nerves to start regenerating into my hands and I can move them around. That's... And then the girls are giving me loads of stuff to do, you know, Dan? <laughs> We never expected patients to say, you know, I feel complete again. It's not about what somebody else looks at you and thinks. It's not cosmetic or aesthetic. It's what you yourself see as being complete. Yeah. It feels weird. Oh, Don't be scared. Yeah. <laughs> Your finger's just touched. <laughs> Don't worry, it's my finger, the next finger. Just yeah. to, remember, I'm going to tickle you severely when I when you start working. <laughs> I can't wait until the fingers move. You're so ticklish, right? Beep beep. <laughs> That's huh? so ticklish, Dad. <laughs> but aren't they lovely? Ah, they're exactly. That's so nice. Um, What's it like working in a hospital since the pandemic? Find out more by watching exclusive interviews with NHS staff behind the scenes. Go to bbc.co.uk forward slash saving lives in Leeds and follow the link to the Open University. Details of organisations offering information and support with blood, tissue and organ donation are available at bbc.co.uk forward slash action line. <laughs>